We think, from what we've been told, that this type of a research project is unprecedented. Uh, there's never been an effort made to look at a relatively large population of individuals buried in prehistoric times uh, in an effort to learn something about a disease that's very significant in modern medicine. And unfortunately, we're not in a position to answer that question other than to say that the frequency of cystic fibrosis mutations, especially Delta F508, is so high in the uh, uh, Western European and Euro-American populations that there must be some uh, selective advantage or uh, probable health or fertility benefit for those that have one CFTR mutation. This would be analogous to the situation with uh, sickle cell hemoglobin uh, in African Americans. This mutation became quite prevalent in Africa because of the presence of life-threatening uh, malarial infections. Well, to try to determine what might be the uh, selective advantage of the uh, cystic fibrosis heterozygote carrier, we've decided to use uh, history to guide us. Now we know that this is a relatively old mutation. Delta 508 uh, is at least uh, 3,000 years old. We're uh, actively investigating uh, individuals who lived in prehistoric times, particularly in the pre-Roman period, uh, Iron Age and the Bronze Age. Attempts to try to link cystic fibrosis to some infectious disease to sort of reproduce the association between sickle cell hemoglobin and malaria have failed. Uh, we decided to think out of the box on this mm -hmm. and uh, be looking at other toxic factors in the environment. Now, we also believe that they were exposed to uh, 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 metal toxicity from heavy metals such as iron and arsenic. And we have data that supports that. And we believe that the connection between the two uh, might be uh, a protection in CF heterozygote carriers with a Delta F508 mutation, protection from lead and our, our uh, arsenic toxicities. When this first became possible, it was considered a glorious dream that you could take ancient DNA, amplify it, and study it. However, by the mid-1990s, this glorious dream had turned into a nightmare because it was found that contamination with modern DNA was a very serious problem, and results were being published that were absolutely impossible. I was very fortunate to establish a collaborative uh, uh, research relationship with the Laboratory of Molecular Genetics in uh, uh, Brittany, France, uh, specifically with a great molecular geneticist, Claude Ferrec, and uh, his laboratory, which included an absolutely superb analytical molecular geneticist, uh, Cedric Lamarachal, uh, was willing to take on this kind of a project. From the beginning of this study, we got the STR profile of all the people in the lab. So what happened is that, and I was waiting for this moment, uh, in one sample, we clearly saw the profile of Caroline. But I told her that it's fine. It means that the process we design allows us to identify such contamination.
so the controls are just really essential for the type of PCRs we're doing, and it, even pre-PCR. So a lot of times what we have to do is workflow is the main essential um, process here. So in the pre-PCR kind of clean area of the lab, we'll do our decontamination of the teeth. So a lot of times our teeth come, they have soil contamination, and we have a series of different solutions to decontaminate it and remove any of that exogenous DNA from the surface of the tooth. This has to be regarded as a 21st century project. It would have been impossible to do this project in the 1990s when I first conceived of it. We feel uh, that our strategy of looking to history for guidance uh, will be uh, a successful strategy.